and we'll get into a lot more. And I, I wanted to point out one thing also as far as measurement devices that a lot of people haven't uh, gone, obviously a lot of you guys haven't gone into this stuff, maybe some of you have, but I think what's very useful for a lot of people in their control room as they're learning the control room is some simple acoustic measurement devices. First and foremost, your ears. Mm -hmm. Secondly, a calculator, maybe a piano or a guitar, so you can figure out what notes you're hearing, and uh, and some sine waves or whatever. But sitting there, when when you when we do these measurements in a control room, like Chris was saying a few minutes ago, you can make these window, you can adjust the gate times and things like that, and you can make these graphs change. Believe me. Uh, but what, and that's why it takes an experienced you know measure measure to actually make sense out of them. But what we try to do is we try to, to find the, those graphs that correlate with things we're actually hearing. And then when you see bingo, you know, you've got the bump on the graph, it's exactly at 43 hertz, exactly where the speaker's sounding funny, then, then you go, okay, we really have to zero in on this. Because otherwise, there's so many bumps on those graphs that you can really spin your wheels, waste a lot of time. So I really recommend you become familiar with, you know, what note is 40 hertz? Know what that is. When you listen to your favorite CDs, know what key you're, you're in. So when the bass gets, starts to drop out, you know that, that F is always too loud on this song because of where I'm sitting and whatever, and that's X hertz and so on. Knowing that sort of stuff on a gut level, uh, then moving into some of this fancier software, I think is the way to go. For those of you guys, guys who don't know, Wes is the guy who talks about modes in terms of musical notes. So he's all about trying to all keep it stuff. real, keep it in the musical realm. Keep it real. Keep so like the, the quick, easy way to do that would be, would this be an accurate way to do it? Just plug like a, a keyboard into your studio monitors and sit there and play up the spectrum. Yes. Sure. Yes. Also, fig, fig, figure find out, out figure like out, take a calculator. Gone, if A is 440, that it's yeah. also 220, 110, 55. So no, when you're thinking 55 hertz, think A. Start thinking of them that way. Instead of just talking about 250 is a muddy region, whatever. What note is that? It's middle I, C, you know. On the on the Mac, there's actually a widget, a couple of widgets that you press comes up and it'll give you a keyboard and tell you exactly what frequency you just hit the keyboard. Right. That's cool. So, so those kind of tools are really useful for you as you try to make this actually relate to your mixing <coughs> abilities. If you and, do a search for a note frequency chart, you'll find any number of things too. Yeah. Mac has it's another different. widget that's, that's really cool also. It sh it, it'll tell you how long a wavelength is. You can yeah. type in a frequency, it'll tell you how, how long it is. And another thing that's a really great tool Headphones. Get yeah. a good, reliable set of headphones, like some Grados or something. Yeah. <clears throat> and if you're hearing an anomaly in your control room, um, you're hearing an anomaly in your control room that might be hanging out there, you can put on a set of headphones and you can eliminate room that way. Of course, you want to know that your headphones aren't out to lunch. Get some reliable. Grados are great. There's some other ones out there. As well. No iPod, iPod earbuds. No, no earbuds allowed. <laughs> Excuse for your room outside. 